it'd be interesting to ask your thoughts about something, which is um, autonomous weapon systems. U.S. has now officially released a report saying that they're open to, uh, not open, they're engaging in, in um, adding more and more autonomy and artificial intelligence into its weapon systems because China is doing it. And so there's these are the first steps in an, something that AI folks worry about, which is uh, a race, an AI race in the space of autonomous weapons that can run away uh, too quickly. Is that something, um, I don't know if in general, if you have thoughts about weapon systems that make autonomous decisions at the small scale of just targeting where to shoot and at the larger scale of military strategy of just get, being given a mission of destroy this particular target, this particular, say, terrorist human being and then figure out what is the right bombing campaign on your own to accomplish this task that minimizes civilian death. And, and then just loading that in and letting the AI system automatically decide that. Uh, what are your general thoughts about it? Do you, do you worry about it? Because as the positive effects that in the best version of that world, you kill fewer civilians, you kill, hurt, fewer of your own human beings, but on the negative side of that, you might lose the the thing we kind of talked about, which is the basic humanity, even in the individual soldier of what is right and what is wrong, and not making huge mistakes that hurt thousands or millions of people. I guess what you're asking me is if they could make a machine that could do more surgical attacks on enemy individuals, would I be for it? Yes, I would be for it. The problem is, if you've ever used machines of any kind, their initial design may not be, there. there's unintended consequences. There's, uh, there's ways in the, the, the machine actually behaves that you realize there's bugs in this thing. So, do we not put protocols in place to prevent something from going too far outside the boundaries of what we want it to execute? You do, but the question is, uh, this is the first time in human history you can create things, machines, toaster, microwave oven, that's smarter than you in this particular task. <laughs> I mean, it's not yet there. It, we, what you're learning a lot with military strategy is humans are actually really damn smart. It's very hard to, do, to to improve on a human. And so most actual drones that are unmanned are still piloted by humans. It's very difficult to do every aspect of war, but it's not a, out of the realm of possibility that machines will start doing those things better and certain, certain things, a certain more precise targeting of the enemy. The question is, so what happens when you start to rely on the machine to do some of the task is you get lazy. You forget what it is like to do that task, you, or more importantly, you lose the knowledge of the intricacies of that task and you forget the ways it can go wrong. So the protocols may not be sufficient to constrain the power of the ways that things go wrong, especially when things are moving really quickly especially when the ethics of the two sides aren't perfectly aligned. When people are some certain sides, like on the Chinese side, may be more willing to take risks uh, for dangerous consequences than others. So what happened on the bioweapon side is internationally, maybe you can speak to this more, but my sense, what I was told, there was a sense globally that bioweapons are not going to be used. They're unethical. There's a sense like we're not going to engage in this. And with AI currently, China and US said, green light, all go ahead. It's it's totally ethical. If, if it can decrease the loss of human life, uh, why not? And my worry is that uh, 
it's much more it's it's much easier to design weapons that are effective than design weapons who have the the depth of ethics and morals that humans do which i think we don't as human beings don't acknowledge enough that even like the cold calculated killing of others like precise effective execution of a mission still has ethics in it at the, every level you know what's right and what's wrong and i don't know if that i don't know if you take that away you're not going to make huge mistakes that you regret is that something you don't worry about i i don't really worry about it um but as you design something like i said you you put protocols in place and and from what i am hearing you say or trying to hear you say there's be a point where our protocols wouldn't be wouldn't be sufficient to stop the machine from doing something that was unethical i'm kind of worried that this is something you don't worry about because a lot of people i respect don't worry about it and i don't know what to do about that a lot of generals don't worry about it a lot of people who know much more about war like you than me don't worry about it and that worries me well that's because you have a vision into the shortfalls of ai and i don't i don't have a vision of the shortfalls of ai i don't know enough about it as far as i'm concerned you put a on off switch somewhere you put a a, a kill switch on a system and if it starts going awry you hit the kill switch and that's it so if you know when you look at me and say well there's no possible way to put a kill switch that would be 100 percent effective and here's you draw out those concerns to me and we could talk through it and say okay well here's where we should draw the line yeah i, I mean it's like again for the soviet union chernobyl meltdown there was always the ability i believe to have a kill switch the problem is uh the more power you give to the machine the more uh opportunity you give to the to the human supervising that machine to make a mistake and not shut off the switch at the right time so yes the solution i mean you're putting the responsibility still in the human hands and i think that's the correct place to put it there should be good protocols good leadership good execution competency all around your protocols should consider the basic failures of human nature the human factor of how things go wrong so there should be multiple people supervising the system all those things but i am just very skeptical of greater and greater power in the machine that can create war that can uh, lead to death yeah and that's why like i said and like you just said you have protocols in place that yeah. that are a kill switch and if if you think about the amount of nuclear weapons that we've had on planet earth for the past however many years and there's been you know, no rogue element that said, you know what, I'm going to shoot this thing. There's been no protocol that took place where all of a sudden we said, oh, oh no. I mean, there's been, there's been escalations, but the protocols worked, have worked so far. Now, that's a scary thing to think about, that we rely on these protocols to stop some rogue element out there from launching a, a missile that could kill millions of people and trigger... A, a global war so yeah the protocol should be strict <laughs> okay 